Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the LP4 Laser Engraver by Laser Pecker. This dual laser machine combines both a blue diode laser and an infrared laser in the same machine so that you can engrave on almost any material imaginable. But is the LP4 the single laser you need in your shop? Let's find out. Before we begin, this LP4 was provided for me to review by Laser Pecker. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review and they won't see this video before it is released. Everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. Let's get started. The LP4 is the world's first dual laser engraver, which combines a 10 watt, 450 nanometer blue diode laser with a 2 watt, 1064 nanometer infrared laser in the same machine. This gives you the best of both worlds, as you can switch between the laser type that works best for the material you are engraving. The blue diode laser is great for woods, leather, and stone, while the infrared laser is great for metals like gold, silver, and brass, as well as plastics. At the top of the LP4 is the laser head. Both laser sources are contained within the head and use a set of Galvo mirrors to direct the laser through the focusing lens and onto the material. On top is a touchscreen which lets you switch between the blue and infrared lasers as well as to select files for offline engraving. The touchscreen has a simple interface that is easy to use. On top of the handle is an emergency stop button which immediately cuts power to the laser. The laser head sits on an electric stand. This motorized stand lets you move the laser up and down to focus the laser onto your material. You can either focus using the provided ruler, making sure that the bottom of the lens is 150 millimeters from the surface that you are engraving, or you can use the red marking lights which will line up when you are the right distance away. Finally, the included safety shield also acts as a focusing guide, as the laser will be focused right at the bottom of the shield. The electric stand made focusing very easy. The safety shield is an orange plastic that Laser Pecker says is the right tint for blocking both the blue and infrared laser. They include a set of orange safety goggles as well. I don't have the right equipment to be able to validate just how much light gets through the shield. The shield has a small exhaust fan that connects to the laser head via USB. The fan does a decent job at clearing away the smoke when working with materials like wood. However, one of the main drawbacks is the lack of an air assist. With no air blowing onto the material, it can be easy for flames to appear when cutting materials like wood. I had to use the emergency stop when trying to find the right power and speeds for cutting 3mm wood, as a flame appeared that just wouldn't go out. To prevent flames, you'll want to run the laser faster and use a couple more passes than you might with other 10 watt lasers that have an air assist. The safety shield also makes it hard to adjust the position of the object. Either you have to raise the laser up, which would require refocusing it after, or use something small to reach under and adjust your materials. It's not ideal when working with smaller objects. The LP4 has a working area of 160mm by 120mm, but that can be extended to 160mm by 300mm with the optional motorized slide extension. This connects to the laser head via USB and will move the material underneath the laser. You can also use it for batch processing to make it more efficient use of your time. I found that the LP4's initial working area was a little small for some of my usual diode laser test projects, but the slide extension gave more than enough room to cut them. And speaking of accessories, the LP4 also supports the Laser Pecker rotary attachment. This rotary chuck allows working with round, cylindrical, and spherical objects. It comes with a variety of different attachments, including ring holders, so you can find the right way to hold your objects. The rotary attachment also has an end stop with a pair of rollers and a sensor chuck for supporting your objects. I found the rotary easy to assemble and to connect to the LP4. Finally, the LP4 can be used in a variety of different positions. The sensor of the base can be removed to engrave onto surfaces too large to fit on top of the stand. You can also use the LP4 handheld. Weighing just 4 kilograms, this is a pretty portable laser. The safety shield could also be used for handheld engraving. Finally, the entire laser head could be tilted if you need to engrave onto an angled surface. The Laser Pecker LP4 is the king of flexibility when it comes to connecting to and using the laser. The easiest way is via the Laser Pecker Design Space mobile app. This app allows you to connect to the LP4 via Bluetooth, create and import designs, and start jobs. The app is fully featured. There's nothing that you can't do via the app, including using the slide or rotary extensions. The app is also the only way to update the firmware, which is easy to do. A quick word of caution, the LP4 uses the Laser Pecker Design Space app, which is different than the old Laser Pecker app. While the Laser Pecker app will allow you to connect to and use the LP4, it is missing features like the ability to update the firmware, so be sure you're using the correct app for the LP4. You can also connect the LP4 to a computer via USB and use either Laser Pecker Design Space software or other programs like Lightburn or Laser Gerbil. 
Laser Pecker Design Space is very similar to the mobile app. While it is usable, I found it tougher to work with larger or more complex designs. I had a tough time selecting the lines I wanted to select, and switching the line between fill, line, or cut was not very intuitive. I would like to see some usability improvements in future updates. Once you have your design ready, you can select from the extensive pre-made material setting. There is a list for both the infrared laser and the blue laser, and you can always adjust those settings as needed. Preview will turn on the blue laser in a low-powered mode, and once you're happy with the position, you can start the job. Lightburn support is also pretty good, including switching between the blue and infrared lasers. Even though this is a Galvo laser, you will need a license for the G-code version of Lightburn, as that is how the LP4 is controlled. Everything works with Lightburn as expected, even the slide and rotary extensions. The only weirdness when using Lightburn is that the touchscreen display on the LP4 does not change when you switch between the blue laser and the infrared laser when connected to Lightburn. This caught me off guard the first couple of times that I saw it, I thought I didn't select the right laser type. So with all the specs out of the way, let's take a look at some of my tests. Wood works very well with the blue laser. The app's default beach setting worked very well for plywood, but it is easy to slow things down a little too much and cause burning. The engravings have a consistent depth, but you can see darkening of the edges from the soot that is caused by the lack of air assist. Picture engravings from Lightburn worked well. It is possible to cut wood in a single pass, although I recommend two passes for a cleaner cut. This living hinge turned out great. Colored acrylics is where I think that the LP4 shines. The blue laser is great for removing material, like deep engraving or cutting. The infrared laser creates a very crisp white engraving on this black acrylic. This gives a very interesting design where you can engrave the high contrast design on the acrylic with the infrared laser and then cut it out using the blue laser without needing to move or realign the material. If you do a lot of colored acrylics, this would be a good technique to explore. Natural stones also work well with both laser types. The blue laser gives a very white appearance to these slate coasters, while the infrared laser gives more of a subdued gray appearance. The edges of the design are nice and crisp. Brass is a material that blue lasers cannot engrave, but the infrared laser can. 2 watts is not enough power to really remove much material, so you cannot achieve a quote, deep engraving with the LP4. However, it does leave a nice and durable black appearance. I love custom brass coins, they're always fun to make. Both laser types work for engraving anodized aluminum. I think I got better results using the blue laser, but it might be a difference in the recommended speeds. It would be worth experimenting more to really dial in those settings. And finally, stainless steel. The blue laser can create some beautiful colored oxides if you vary the power and line intervals. I couldn't get colors to appear using the infrared laser, but that laser creates more durable marks since it actually removes material. It is good to have the option depending on your application. Now there are a few drawbacks that I found using the LP4. The main problem that I had was the physical dimensions of my designs. I could not get the LP4 to consistently cut or engrave the design at the right size. I have a standard set of test designs that I use, so it is very obvious when the object comes out at a different size than expected. Some designs were larger than expected, like these slate coasters while other designs were smaller, like this aluminum business card. I had the focus set correctly, so I'm not entirely sure what could cause this discrepancy. You can easily see that the circle on these brass coins came out as ovals, and that these test patterns show that my expected 130mm width is 125mm, using both the laser pecker design space and light burn. For some people, this might not be an issue. If you mainly engrave single designs, then it probably doesn't matter if the engraving is slightly larger or smaller, as long as the preview lets you position the image correctly. For other people, this could be a deal breaker, especially if you are designing parts that fit together. The other drawback comes from the fact that this is a Galvo laser. Because the laser lens is stationary, the angle that the laser hits your material changes from sensor to edge. Cuts made near the sensor will have walls close to 90 degrees perpendicular, but as you move towards the edge of the boundary, your cuts will start to be angled. This results in almost a 30 degree angle in the worst case. This makes designing parts that fit together difficult on the LP4, since that kerf offset and angle changes depending on where that part is located. So in conclusion, the Laser Pecker LP4 is a very impressive machine for a very particular type of user. If you are looking for a machine that excels at engraving and can work with the largest variety of materials, then the LP4 could be a great choice. The dual laser that combines both a 10 watt blue diode and a 2 watt infrared laser lets you work with almost every type of material. It is very compact and portable, letting you use it handheld or easily stored away when not in use. 
I could see this thriving in a marketplace environment where you might be personalizing your products with a name or phrase using just the phone app. It really does put the capabilities of two different lasers into a single machine. However, the drawbacks could make it unusable for other types of users, particularly if you need dimensionally accurate designs that assemble together. You'll want to be honest with yourself about the types of project that you are interested in when considering if the LP4 is right for you. The Laser Picker LP4 sells for $1,799 at the time of recording. The bundle that I have here, with the slide extension and rotary extension, sells for $2,279. Considering that the LP4 is two lasers in one, it's not an entirely unreasonable price compared to the price of a 10 watt laser engraver plus an additional 2 watt infrared module. If you are the particular type of user that I described previously, where portability is key and you'll need to engrave on a large variety of materials, then I could recommend the Laser Pecker LP4 engraver. So thank you all for watching my review of the LP4. What was your favorite feature of the LP4? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're still in the market for laser engravers, why not check out my review of the Waxker 10 watt laser engraver? It might just be the laser you're looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.